everyone, it's Miss Megan here and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I will be discussing a lesson for the subject English for Academic and Professional Purposes. And that is to be specific, determining the objectives and structures of various kinds of reports. For this lecture, by the way, I use the module developed by the Department of Education as my reference. As we go through this lesson, you will be introduced to writing reports and outlining the different structures. But before we proceed to the lesson, let us first talk about the following terms. For the vocabulary list, we have first the scholar. A scholar is a specialist in a particular branch of study, especially the humanities, a distinguished academic. Next, we have essay, and this is defined as a short piece of writing on a particular subject. Next, we have hard sciences. Any of the natural and physical sciences, as chemistry, biology, physics, or astronomy, in which aspects of the universe are investigated by means of hypotheses and experiments. Many scholars have defined report as an informational work made with an intention to relay information or recounting certain events in a presentable manner. These are often conveyed in writing, speech, television, or film. Moreover, considering report as an administrative necessity, hence most official form of information or work are completed via report. Note that report is always written in a sequential manner in order of occurrence. A key feature of a report is that it is formally structured in sections. The use of sections makes it easy for the reader to jump straight to the information they need. And like an essay which is written in a single narrative style from start to finish, each section of a report has its own purpose. Reports communicate information which has been compiled as a result of research and analysis of data and issues. Please note, however, that reports can cover a wide range of topics but usually focus on transmitting information with a clear purpose to a specific audience. In this sense, you can come up with your own definition of report as a systematic, articulate, and orderly presentation of research work in written form. Remember that you may be required to write several different types of reports, so it would be better for you to understand them well. So here are the most common types of reports that you need to understand. First, we have the field reports. And these are common in disciplines such as law, industrial relations, psychology, nursing, history, and education. These types of reports require the student to analyze these or her observations of phenomena or events in the real world in the light of theories studied in the course. The purpose of a field report in the social sciences is to describe the observation of people, places, and or events and to analyze that observation data in order to identify and categorize most common themes in relation to the research problem underpinning the study. For this kind of report, there are techniques that you can use to record your observations and let's start with the most common and let's say the easiest way of doing so and that is note taking. Now, this is a tip for you to do the note-taking. You have to organize some shorthand symbols beforehand so that recording basic or repeated actions does not impede your ability to observe. Next is photography. Some of you may be photographers here and it's a good point. With the advent of smartphones, an almost unlimited number of high-quality photographs can be taken of the objects, events, and people observed during a field study. And photographs can help capture an important moment in time as well as document details about the space where your observation takes place. And taking a photograph can save you time in documenting the details of a space that would otherwise require extensive note-taking. Also related to photography, we have video and audio recordings, which I myself find the most effective of all the techniques presented. And they are related because they both require electronic devices. Video or audio recording, your observations has the positive effect of giving you an unfiltered record of the observation of event. It also facilitates the repeated analysis of your observation. And this can be particularly helpful as you gather additional information or insights during your research. Lastly, we have illustrations. This does not refer to an artistic endeavor, but rather refers to the possible need for example to draw a map of the observation setting or illustrating objects in relation to people's behavior. But please remember that those techniques of deliberate observation and data gathering are not innate skills, meaning they are skills that must be learned and practiced in order to achieve proficiency. 
Now we have technical and business reports and these include the disciplines with an applied focus such as engineering, information technology, commerce, accounting, and finance. Technical writing is a form of writing technical communication or documentation in science and technology or applied science that helps people understand a product or a service. The main purpose of technical writing is to inform and to trigger the person into action such as purchasing a product or service. And its purpose may also be to instruct, persuade, but never to entertain. Often technical reports are detail-oriented and require advanced knowledge in the specific field and the tone of technical writing output is objective. Examples of technical writing um, outputs are end-user documentation like user manuals that accompany cellular phones and personal computers. Next, we have the scientific reports, and they are common in all the sciences, including the social sciences. Now, these reports use a standard scientific report format describing methods, results, and conclusions to report upon an empirical investigation. The purpose of a science report is to clearly communicate your key message about why your scientific findings are meaningful. And in order for you to do this, you have to explain why you are testing a hypothesis, what methodology you used, what you found, and why your findings are worth the reader's time. And this requires a clear link between your introduction and your analysis or discussion. Let us now move to the writing of reports. Writing report is highly scary to neophytes in the field of research. This feeling of intimidation in preparing a research report is widespread and overcoming this fear entails practice and application of certain techniques. There are different parts of research reports and it takes time to familiarize oneself with the requirement of each part. Hence, it necessitates frequent exposure to and practice on techniques of research report writing. The different parts of the research report include the following. First, we have the introductory phase, review of related literature, research methodology, analysis, body of the report, conclusion, and recommendation. For the introductory phase, it contextualizes and sets the tone and direction of research writing. Introduction is as important as the main parts of the research report. It is like a road map that guides you in the research journey. According to Raidman, 2001, it answers the following question. First, what was I was studying? What did we know about this topic before we study? And how they study advanced new knowledge or new ways of understanding. Next to our introduction is the review of literature and the review of related literature or RRL provides study background and environment. The intention of the RRL is to locate the study in its area of discipline and reveal its relevance and significance in the environment. The RRL would indicate if your topic is building on previous researchers or if it is a new area of inquiry and it should make one realize that a study is worth pursuing or not. Research methodology is our next part. In research, the research process is as important as the research content. Thus, a research report must also contain a description of the research strategy. The readers will be interested in finding how you arrived at a particular study result. And it was even pointed out that the readers would be interested to know the following. First is the research topic the cases you have studied, research methods you have chosen to use, and how you have analyzed the data. Next is writing the conclusions. But of course, let us know first how we characterize conclusions. Conclusions are inferences, deductions, abstractions, implications, interpretations, and the general ideas, statements, or generalizations based on findings. A good conclusion answers the specific questions identified at the introductory phase of the research. After writing your conclusions, we move to the writing of recommendations. The research recommendation is a part of the paper where you make suggestions about some resolutions as a response to the research problem. It must be consistent part of the conclusion. It proposes scientific solutions connected with the findings and must be supported by relevant data and scientific data from the findings. 
Now for my students for this subject, before I ask you to start writing your own report, first I want you to compare and contrast the three types of reports which I presented in this lesson. The technical, field, and scientific report, and please be guided by this table. Now for your comparison and contrast, I want you to use a Venn diagram. Okay? And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for um, listening to my class. I hope you learned something. Bye!